If Sharon eats half a pound of roast beef per day, how many pounds of roast beef will she eat in two weeks? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or what about E? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this question out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically for this question here, two weeks is equal to 14 days. So I'm just going to put a little D here instead of writing out days to save time. And this information right here where it says she eats half a pound of roast beef per day. Okay, this is really the key to figuring this question out. Now half a pound, that is just equal to 0.5. So I'm going to write 0.5 here. And I'm going to put a little P here for pounds. And we know that it's half a pound or 0.5 pounds per one day. So I'm going to put one D down here. So if I do the math, if I do 14 times 0.5, okay, I'm going to to get seven pounds. And so if you're confused about how exactly I knew uh, to do the calculation here, I just set it up so that the days are going to cancel out, right? We have 14 days divided by one day down here and the days, the unit these are going to cancel out here. And when I do 14 times 0.5, I'm going to see that my answer is left in pounds. So if you ever have a question like this, and you're not sure how to set up the calculation, all right, try to set it up like this so that you end up with an answer in pounds. All right, see how the D's cancel out here. Hopefully this makes sense. I'm going to show you the written solution. If you have trouble with this question, you can pause the video, take all the time you need to read the solution. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. A soccer coach brings 20 sports drinks and 35 water water bottles to a game for his team to drink. What is the ratio of sports drinks to water bottles in simplest form? Is the answer A, B, or what about C? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and if you get stuck, don't worry because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so in this case here, we're asked the ratio of sports drinks to water bottles. So let me just put an S for sports drinks, and then let me put a W here for water bottles. And so right now, what we know is that there are 20 sports drinks. So I'm going to put a 20 up here and we have 35 water bottles. So I'm going to put 35 right here. Okay. So right now the ratio of sports drinks to water bottles, we have 20 over 35, but we want to simplify this down. And what hopefully you can see here is that we can divide both 20 and 35 by five. So let's do that. If I divide 20 by five, okay, what do I get? 20 divided by five is four. And if I do 35 divided by five, I get seven. Okay. And so four over seven, that's really just one way of writing a ratio. This is writing the ratio as a fraction, but I could also write it just like this. And the bottom line here is that C is the correct answer here. And I'm going to show you the written solution right now. If you'd like to, you could pause the video, take all the time you need to read this. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. If the following rectangle has a perimeter of 118 feet, what is the area? So this is a bit harder of a question. Uh, I saw I'll give you a chance to pause the video, try this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it. Like I said, this is a little bit tougher of a question. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so let's talk about this question here. So whether you got stuck or not, uh, it doesn't matter for right now. We are just practicing. It's all about the learning. And so here we see that we've got a rectangle. And when we've got a rectangle, what I want you to see is that these two sides are going to match in length. So if this side over here is length 12, we know that this side over here is also going to be 12. Now also this part right here is going to match in length to this part down here. Okay, but we don't know what this side is equal to. So I'm just going to call it x for right now. Now, to calculate the perimeter, what we would do is we would add up all of the sides. All right. So we know that this side is 12 and we know that this side is 12 and we know we don't know what this side is. So we would I'm just going to call it X and we also don't know what this side right here is. So I'm just going to call that X and we know that this is all equal to 118. So what I can do here is I can use this formula here and do the math and I'm going to figure out what the missing side is. So that's my first step to this problem. So I'm just doing some simplification right here. We see 12 plus 12 is 24. X plus X is 2X. This is all equal to 118. Okay. And so now what I want to do is I want to get this to this X by itself. So if I have 24 plus 2X, I can subtract 24 from both sides. Okay. So let's see what happens when I do that. So then I'm left with 2X equals 94. So if I have 2X, that's the same as 2 times times x. And if I divide by two here, okay, I'm going to get rid of these twos and just leave me alone 
leave x by itself on the left hand side. So what if I divide 94 by two? Here's what I'll figure out. I'll find that x equals 47. So if you made it this far and you figured out that x equals 47 and you came over here and you thought e was the right answer, well, I want you to know that you did a really good, you did something really good by figuring out that x equals 47. Okay, but we have to take one more step here. All right, so if you got that far, really, really good job, but we need to go a little bit further. And if you didn't make it this far, hopefully you you now understand how I got this far. So now what I need to do, since I know that this side is equal to 47, and I also know that this side up here, this side right here is also going to be equal to 47. Okay, I need to calculate the area. And the way that I find the area of a rectangle, okay, I'm going to multiply the length times the width. All right. In other words, I'm going to multiply 12 times 47. 12 times 47. You could also do 47 times 12. It's going to give you the same answer either way. At any rate, what we're going to get is 464 or sorry, I can't talk right, 564 as your answer, which is A. And so if you had trouble with this, I'm gonna give you a chance to pause the video and you can take all the time you need to study the written solution. And then when you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. Okay, so this question here, let me read this out in case it's hard to see on your screen. I have six raised to the power of 10 divided by six raised to the power of four times six raised to the power of 15 divided by six raised to the power of 10. And I'd like you to try to do this one without a calculator. Uh, using a calculator here, actually actually probably won't be that helpful, but let's have you try to do this without a calculator. And if you just have no idea how to do this, don't worry because I'm just gonna explain it. So I'll let you pause the video, give you a chance to try this out, and then we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically there are two key exponent rules to know for this question here. Okay, whenever you have a situation like this, when you've got the same base, six to the 10 divided by six to the four, these both have the same base. The six is the base, the 10 is the exponent. Whenever you have the situation, all right, all you have to do is subtract 10 and four. So I can really rewrite this as six to the power of six. The same with the six to the 15 over six to the 10. Both of these numbers have six as their base. What I can do is just do 15 minus 10, which is five. So this original question, I can simplify this down to six to the power of six times six to the five. Now here's another rule to know. Whenever two numbers have the same base like this, we are multiplying them, okay? You can just simply add the exponents up, all right? So since I've got six to the power of six times six to the power of five, all right, I can, you just keep that base the same and add these exponents and it's five plus six is 11. Okay, so B is the correct answer here. And if you haven't studied exponent rules that, that much yet, then this was probably tricky for you. Um, so you could either, you could watch one of my videos that I've covered exponent rules uh, or you could look at a textbook, you know, however you want to do it. But there's two simple exponent rules you hopefully learn from this question. And here's the written solution if you want to take a look at it. 